Hey, thanks for dropping by to the Planners on Purpose podcast, created by Naomi Tucker, CMP. Now, this space is for the event planners to encourage and empower you so that you can fully live your life on purpose. So before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe so you get future shows. Now, here she comes, your host, Naomi. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here. We're at episode 40 and actually episode 41. And today we're going to talk about how to create a life plan to meet your goals. Now, we've talked about getting in action for the new year. That was the previous episode. And I hope that you're moving forward with some of those items that we talked about in that episode. Now, this episode is going a little bit deeper and really drilling down into how you're going to create that life plan, what elements make up that plan, and how you can make sure that you're consistent and get accountability for your plan as you move forward throughout the year. Now, if you've missed that episode, I encourage you to go ahead and get caught up by going to episode 40. It's just one episode back from this one. And when you're ready, just come back here and we'll just start getting into the thick of it. Now, I know we're all in event planning and some of us are so, so good at creating plans for our clients, our programs, our weddings, our events, our exhibitions, all of the events, right? However, when's the last time that you created a plan for yourself? Sometimes we're running so fast that we forget about ourselves in the process. And I've seen it up close and personal, the elaborate plans and that we have for our clients and the elaborate strategy around pivoting to certain um, different strategic methods, what platform that you need to use. However, somehow, as far as your plans for your personal life, um, they've gotten lost. The thing is, we need to make sure that during our days, we have goals for all aspects of our well-being. It isn't just enough to say, yeah, I'll get better at that. Because without intentional steps, my friend, you're going to be left in the same place, or most likely. Now, to be purposeful and intentional, you need to create a life plan to bring about that action in your life. Now, to be purposeful and intentional, you need to create a plan of action for your life. Now, in my recent blog post, if you follow that, I created seven tools that you need in order to create a life plan. You can head over to the blog to learn more, but essentially you need to put in place an area that you document this plan. So in my post, I talk about in depth about why you should use different tips and tools and techniques for creating your plan. And in today's show, I want to speak about the process of creating that life plan. So first, I say, go back to that blog post, or if you have your tool that you're going to be using to create your plan, have that in mind as you're walking through this podcast episode. For me, I prefer a planner, a digital planner and a physical planner. For you, you might enjoy a planner, but perhaps you like to have a whiteboard in your office or a journal, or perhaps you're more visual and you would like to do a vision board or have a vision board available for you. Whatever it may be, create that time and create that space for you to sit down and figure out what you want for yourself. Now your clients, They're just one facet of who you are. And as much as we think we can't exist without them, which in part we can't, we can't forget about who we are because when we forget about those aspects about ourselves, we then lose sight of it and it causes us to have more stress and it causes us to have less purpose. So make sure that you have plans throughout all aspects of your well-being. So you may be wondering, what does that mean, Naomi? Well, it means that make sure that you're touching all the different areas of your life. And I think of those in terms of the eight pillars of wellness. Now I am going to tell you what those eight pillars are. So if you want, go ahead and get a pen, a piece of paper so that you can write it down. 
and so that you know what these eight pillars of wellness are. Are you ready? Okay, so the eight pillars of wellness are emotional, financial, social, spiritual, occupational, intellectual, environmental, and physical. Now, when you look at these eight pillars or dimensions of wellness, you need to make sure that your your well-being encompasses everything. And as you can see, occupational is just one part of your wellness. So the other areas that you have also need to get attention. And we might have some that blend together, but it's very helpful just to have these in your mind so that you know and you're reminded of the areas you need to pay attention to. Like I mentioned, I encourage you to check out the last podcast where we talk about some items to get you into action, but I want to break them down for you here a little bit again, and then go a little deeper into some of the other aspects. So the first item I want to remind you of is to reassess your values. Before you're creating your life plan or what goes into creating this plan is making sure that you're reassessing what's working, what's not working, and really reflect on all those areas and ask yourself if anything needs to change. And once you figure that out, determine what needs to change and why. Some other prompts that can help you reevaluate your values are, how would you rate your life? It, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate it? Is it, is it a 1? <laughs> is it a 3? Perhaps it, it is a 10 and everything's going fabulously. What are your drains? Is your energy getting zapped? And what is it what's zapping your energy? What makes you happy? And what's most important to you in your life? And then finally, this is one that I love to um, to consider, is how would you like to be remembered? And so when you think of those questions, it helps to prompt you on what those answers would be. And then that helps you to formulate what your goals will be and how you'll be able to create a plan out of where you're envisioning where you want to go. Now, my second um, second step here is to define your timeline. So like I mentioned, you're writing down what your values are, what you want to see work in your life. And from there, you're making adjustments. You're tweaking those and making them tangible so you can break them down into tiny steps that you're able to do over the course of the year. And this is where your planner comes in. You can bring in your planner and create a mind map or a vision board or some type of structure to show your plan. And you can get as detailed as you want. And I encourage you to be as specific as you need to so that you get down granular to a date that you want things to be completed. So as an example, perhaps you want to feel more happier in your life. And that's a very, you know, it's a very broad concept, very broad value, right? So you want to drill down and ask yourself, well, what makes me happy? And perhaps what makes you happy is getting in touch with nature, is going outside for walks each day. So perhaps that is what your goal is. Maybe you need to just plan on getting outside for 30 minutes every day so that you're closer to nature and you'll feel more happier. And if that's the case, then you're writing that into your planner and you're, and you're putting a time on it and you're putting some date parameters around it. There you go. That's how you choose your structure. And I encourage you to do that for every single goal and every single value that you want to make sure is upheld throughout the year. Now, in terms of planners, I just wanted to bring up the full focus planner only because it's a planner I'm choosing to plan in this year. It's a quarterly planner by Michael Hyatt, and we've read his book, Free to Focus, at our book club. Michael is all about productivity and organization, and this planner is wonderful. So I'm able to put my goals and my actions. I'm able to have a monthly view, yearly view, and even a rolling calendar view. And then there's even some detailed areas every day where I can 
really write out what I want to do for the day. So it really helps me to get out on paper what my thoughts are. My favorite things is that this particular planner has not only a habit tracker, it comes with big, it's spiral bound and it allows you the flexibility when you're writing so it lays flat. So I am enjoying it and I can go on and on about it. It's a pricier planner, but I do think it's worth it. And so if you want to grab the full focus planner, go ahead and do it. I have a link in the description to the planner where you can get $10 off your first order. So try it out and let me know what you think. So next I want to talk about accountability. Accountability comes in all different forms, but the most common forms are not only your planner and the tools that you're using to hold yourself accountable, but also in the form of others. So I encourage you to get some accountability partners in your life, some people that you trust that are going to be dedicated at getting you from one place to another. In addition to accountability partners, you might also want to consider a personal coach like me. A personal coach is literally there with you, encouraging you and helping you meet your goals, and also ensuring that you are able to get fast-tracked from one goal to the next. In addition, um, they are able to provide you with tips and resources to help you along the way. So if you really would like to learn a bit more about coaching and um, having a coach, I encourage you to reach out to me and schedule a free call and we can talk about it and also figure out how we can put your life plan into action this year. Now with your accountability partners, I encourage you to do reoccurring meetings. Now I suggest doing these either weekly if you have like an accountability team you want to hold each other accountable weekly is amazing i do have an accountability team i'm a part of we meet weekly it's exciting we catch up on each other's lives but then we also are holding each other accountable for the items that we said we were going to do the previous week so if that works for you i encourage you to do that and get that cadence of meeting because that is very important. You can also do bi-weekly meetings. I've even seen some people meet monthly, but you have to be consistent and you have to make sure that you're scheduling yourselves to meet regularly. Now, it's very important to have an accountability team or a coach or both to help get you through your year, help you with your professional goals and your personal goals. And if you find that you would like to have an extension of an accountability team, consider coming to the Planners on Purpose community on Facebook. This can act as your support group and we would, I would love for you to join us. We really want to discuss things that are going to support us, give us encouragement and provide resources for you to meet your goal. Now I might do another episode on accountability teams because I feel it's so important. And I have so many tips to share on how you can optimize the experience. So stay tuned for that. Okay, what's next? Next, we have to prepare for setbacks. That's right. There are going to be setbacks when you are moving about your life plan. And just knowing that there's setbacks allows you to plan for those setbacks. And we're all about planning. (laughs) So make sure when you're talking through your plans with your accountability partners and you're holding each other accountable week to week that you're also expressing the things that aren't going so well because things may not go so well and don't be shy because sometimes that's where we need the support and that's where we need a little bit of pushing for us to get back on track now if you have a coach make sure you're also having them be knowledgeable of where you're getting where you're having your tough spots that way they can provide you with resources and ideas to get you out of there now one thing i want you to remember is with setbacks they are going to happen but the key thing is really not overthinking where you are and doing the next best thing it's happened so many times for me where i've had a setback Like a project didn't go out the way I wanted to. I wasn't able to deliver on the due date. Um, Perhaps my kids were were going through a tough time and it was just so hard and I was overwhelmed and it it was so busy, it was paralyzing. 
Has that ever happened to you that you're just paralyzed because of this setback? Well, what I found what works is literally doing the next best thing to move you forward. Make it small, make it doable so that it feels like you're right. You're going in the right direction. So do the next best thing. All right. My next tip is put it where you can see it. Put this life plan that you're creating where you can see it. After you get everything all written out and that you're keeping track in a daily plan, I want you to be able to see your results. I want you to be able to see what you're working towards. It's pretty easy in a planner to be able to do this because you're working through it each day. But if you do have a vision board, and I love vision boards because they're so amazing, they're such a creative expression of um, of what you aspire to do, you can have that hung up somewhere, maybe in your office that you can look at it each day and you're reminded of where you are looking to go. The same thing with a whiteboard or even charts or any type of calendars. It allows you to see when either a deadline is coming or it allows you to envision um, how many, how much you want to do each month, maybe putting a number up so that you can see it, whatever that goal is. It just, it really puts your intentions in front of you every day as insurance that that's something that you want to work towards. So it may not happen in the time frame you want it, but at least you're moving forward. And that's what we're looking to do. We're wanting to have a little more progress. And then I want you to check in often. And I mentioned this with your accountability partners and how it's important to check in often. But if you don't have accountability partners, please just check in with your plan. I like to just do a big review of everything quarterly to make sure that I am still on the right track because you know things do adjust as you go throughout your year. You find opportunities for you to get ahead and then that might put you on a different track or you might find that you're a little behind and you might have to make different type of adjustments. So when you review things quarterly, it's looking at it from a higher level, going back to your annual plan so that you're able to do the adjusting that you need to do and just remind yourself on what the ultimate goal is. So that's it. I know that I'm just getting down into this life plan, but I believe it's just so important. And it's very surprising that when you get to the end of the year, you will be able to see how many amazing things that you were able to accomplish along the way. And sometimes we're doing things that aren't even on our list that just happen to be some small, exciting concessions that come along the way. So I know we've been wallowing in an environment of uncertainty in the last year, and we just need to be certain about where things are going. And creating these plans helps our brains to be content on what our personal direction is. That way we are certain and our bodies do not have much cortisol, that we're doing ourselves a favor, we're giving ourselves less stress, and we're taking that time out to get things done and moving ahead. And that's what I want. I want for you to feel less stressed and for you to have more purpose and really have just more excitement and fulfillment about your life. Now, I would love, love, love it if you would join the Planners on Purpose community on Facebook. Again, we're all about being productive together, going through our ups and our downs, and really making sure that each other is getting to the finish line in terms of our goals. So I will also leave that link in the description, and I hope to see you in the community on Facebook soon. Well, that is all I had for this episode. I really hope that you gain some helpful nuggets, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button and tell us how much you enjoyed the show by leaving a message in the comments. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.